Alrighty. Hello everyone. It's Friday. Time for some painting. Yeah, I hope that's rip. That's not too loud. <laughs> Let's paint a hill troll. All right, we're going to work on this hill troll from Reaper Miniatures. We're going to be using the airbrush. So he's been primed black. Uh, I made the base, and we, now we got a train going by. So he's on um, some cork, some slate rock, so there's some sand texture and some little stones that I glued onto a base for this guy. We're doing a base coat with mahogany from Pearl Krill. Or under, under painting. So we're gonna use a Badger Pacha 105 Arrow. And the needle I have in here is a point three. They're a super fine detail one. And we'll thin the paint a bit with some Vallejo airbrush flow improver. If I can get the cap off here, there we go. So not too much, just at the bottom of the, the cup here. A few drops in there. Use my sturdy brush. Upper. Let's get some more light on here. There we go. All right. So we want to do it mainly from a top down and a 45 degree angle. I want to keep the uh, black and the shadows. Mahogany is a nice uh, dark red brown. Perfect for undercoats. For pretty much anything. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't get too annoying here. So we're going to do the majority of the colors on this model with an airbrush.
we'll see how well that how well this will last today <laughs> with the, the compressor All right. So he's mahoganized. <laughs> so I still have some in here, I think. No, oh, no. Used all the works for me. Then we'll do a quick little cleanup. All I'm using is some water. Scrubby brush, paper towel. Clean that out a bit. Flush it through, make sure that it's clean. And use this uh, Badger Spray Through Airbrush Cleaner. Just put a little bit in there. And just spray it through. Make sure it's clean. putting it back in. Okay. Leave the top off real quick. Many browns so we don't get it into the other color. So we're going to be going back and forth for a while because I kind of want to usually we're going to go back and forth between the two while I'm waiting for that to dry. The uh, this Infinity uh, robot. So we're going to do the armor is going to be yellow, and we have the silver underneath. start with a base coat of dark golden brown and then work up to then we'll do yellow ochre then golden brown and then for final highlights just actual yellow so when you're painting your yellow you want to start with a yellowish brown tone to build up to your yellow Improver in there. Just not. It's not enough. Just enough. Um, to the bottom of the cup there. And what that does is it helps keep the the needle paint drying on the needle, and obviously help flow the the paint flowing through. Pro acryl, pro acryl paints are really good through the airbrush. You 
You don't need to do a whole lot of thinning with them. Straight out of the bottle. You can pretty much just put it right into your airbrush and shoot it through. But I like to add some flow improver just to be on the safe side. It's just so I don't have to deal with t uh, paint getting all gunked up. So as you can see, it's a nice yellowish, dark yellowish brown. Perfect for undercoats for yellow or lighter yellow, uh, lighter leather, brown, tan colors. Zoom this down a bit. There we go. And just slowly pulling back, you know, push, pressing down for the air and then gently pulling back for the paint. I kind of do this down and back motion just to give it uh, like bursts. Rotate it and try not to drop it. This is a heavy model, it's all metal. believe Infinity is one of the few gaming companies that still makes their models out of pewter metal, out of white metal. So this gives me a good foundation to build from for my yellow. Whenever you're painting yellow, I always start with like a brown tan color. So just slowly building up my base coat here. Thin layers just like you do with a brush. some color on here. Uh, let's see here. I'm gonna... Oh, perfect. <laughs> All right. So just going back and forth, cleaning out the, you know, cleaning out your uh, paint out of the cup. So I'll just flushing it out with some water. Using just an old scrubby brush to quickly clean that out. This is just an old coffee cup. Cup, whatever. Just make sure you don't drink out of it. <laughs> I'm just taking the tip of my paper towel and just doing one quick turn 
to wipe it out. And then I just run through some cleaner. I use a Badger spray through cleaner, but any of your airbrush cleaner will work or some uh, mitts of um, isotope alcohol and water. I think um, 10 to 1 mitts, I think. It's like 10 points water to 1 point alcohol. And I just spray it through. I'll just spray it on my paper towel here to make sure it cleans out. Sometimes you might get that little burst of paint at the end. And it's just that there's some paint that's stuck in there. So you just make sure you clean it out real good. Sometimes I'll even take out my needle, just loosen the, the chuck here, gently pull out the, the needle from behind, because it might have some paint on it. And just wipe it off. Go from the, the bottom where you're holding it up to the point. Be very careful with the tip of the needle because you can poke yourself for one thing but also it's very fragile and you can bend it and if you bend the needle your airbrush isn't going to work so, so then when I put it back in um, the trigger here in the body it's got a little hole for the pin to go through I like to hold the trigger back so it's a straight uh, for the, the needle to go straight through. So just line it up. If you feel any resistance, stop. Pull it back out slowly. Don't, you know, try to jam it in there. Alright, so now we got our needle up to the front. We just tighten this up. Spray out any more water that's in there. And we're good to go. Change to our different color. So now we go to our next step, which is yellow ochre. So just a little bit of gunk on the side. Excuse me. Just a little bit, a few drops at the bottom of the reservoir cup here. Just a couple drops, or a few, <laughs> just enough that you um, that you believe is enough to cover what you're painting. Take our little stir her brush, just a cheap brush, and just gently stirring it. This also you don't want to jam in there and and stir it vigorously. Just gently stir it. cap on it so I don't have you know while I'm tip while I'm moving the airbrush you don't want it the, the paint to spill out of the cup. I've had that happen numerous times and made a mess. So I just do a quick little spray through, make sure my color is good, flowing well. Keep this more towards the top of the armor plate. 
So I'm starting from the bottom and working my way up. And we'll zoom in a bit more. Readjust here. So I'm doing, starting from the bottom and working my way up. So I start my air and then I gently pull back to get the, the paint to come out. So then at my, the end of the movement, I let off the paint and, and slowly pull, you know, let it fall back. You don't want your uh, trigger to shoot back like that. You want to gently pull, uh, gently push it back, you know, gently let it go back to the reset, you know, not the reset, but the, the pre, the, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you want it to gently go back to this, the beginning position. So I, so I just let it, I gently guide it back to its original position. That's the word I'm looking for. Original. Sometimes I don't always have the words <laughs> that I'm trying to say here. So we want to keep the dark shadow on the lower part of the panels, but brighter at the top. So then when I come to my next color, I'll do the same thing, but a little higher up. And with the smaller needle, I can get more detail spray, you know, very thin lines. So you're almost hitting down at a top, almost like a top or slightly to the left or right, but I'm doing, you know, instead of doing it all on, on, at once, all from this position, I'm going in closer to each panel and giving it that attention. So I kind of want the light to be coming down this way on the model. So not quite uh, noon, almost like a 11 o'clock. So I can start figuring out my highlights with the airbrush. So I'm, it's going to be brighter here, but it's still going to carry over. So it, it will be more of an arc between, let's say, 11 to 1 o'clock. So pretend that your airbrush is sorry about that it's people outside um, pretend that your airbrush is the sun and so you're directing where you want that light to be And if I get too much in my shadows overtaking that brown, that's fine because I'm gonna come back in with a darker shadow and spray from underneath. So this is just uh, laying out where I want the colors, building up that yellow. Oops. See, and that's this little speckle spray. So I had some paint on the end of my needle, and I blew out. I hit the air, and it speckled it out. But that's okay, because this is I can paint over that. That's why sometimes you'll see uh, painters 
they're spraying, and then all of a sudden they stop and pull over to the side and do quick burst. Maybe even wipe off the needle. This is to help from the needle getting that tip dry on the edge of your needle, which will stop the paint flowing. Back here, in between the two guns, some paneling there. So just getting in there real close. Just pushing down on the air and just gently pulling back to let some paint out. Keep going over the same areas and building up that layer, very thin layers, with the paint to build up that color. Where I want it more brighter. brighter here is because I just I applied more paint so I'm just slowly building up the paint moving it towards the highlight area that I want right here on the shield I mean the shoulder pad It's loud. <laughs> Hopefully that's not picking up too bad on the uh, on the camera here. So now just going in towards the edge. build up those highlights. I'm not I'm not too concerned about overspray on other areas because I can just go back in and with the brush and fix that. Right now I just want to get this yellow color down. So here it's quite dark, so I'm just going to go in there and add a little bit of color because you you would get some light coming in from the underneath. Just to show that those parts are indeed yellow. They may not be as bright as the top part, but they still are part of that yellow armor. All right. 
right. And that was the end of my paint. So we just clean out like normal. Do with all the other ones. Spritz the water in there. Oh boy, that's loud. I'll have to do some adjustments with the uh, compressor where I have it. Maybe put it on the other side of the table where it's away from the camera. All right. You know what? I'm not going to go to the golden brown. We'll just go straight to golden yellow. This is a very bright yellow, but over the yellow ochre, at first it won't be so bright, and we can just build up those highlights. So. Same thing, just at the bottom of the uh, the cup here, some flow improver, Vallejo flow improver, so, golden yellow from uh, Pro Trail, the Pro Trail Monument, Pro Trail paint from Monument Hobbies. There we go. that up real good so you can see it's very uh, bright yellow I mean it's it's throwing off the camera it's so bright but over the with the uh, yellow ochre underneath it gives it a good shadow So here I'm concentrating it more to the edges. Shh. All right, <laughs> I'm concentrating concentrating the the yellow closer to the edges. here on the feet.
Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to put that compressor in a different spot. So the way this is, it's actually the it's a almost like that movie Pacific Rim type thing where you have a human controlling the big mech. And these are the arms that the human is the driver is right in here in the center point and he has his arms out and he uses these arms to control the uh, the mech and he's got his legs in there that controls the bottom portion. So we need to make sure that we get the same colors here. The camera is making it look really greenish. <laughs> it's throwing that off. It's probably because I have the white underneath it. Oh, hold on a minute. There, that looks better. Just because I have the paper towel underneath it and that's white. That's throwing off the camera. There. We'll do it that way. Ah. Now, if I were to <laughs> All right, Epic. How are you doing? I'm working on doing a um, kind of like a one-to-one -one video, like video conferencing. So, if you email me and want to, I can give you some more information. It's uh, Holt Mini Paint at gmail.com. Yeah, I'll show it to you when I switch out the uh, the colors here. That's what I'm doing here. Yeah, once you get starting out in airbrushing once you get the um, it's hard to get the idea to get the right consistency of your paint and thinner mitts but once you get a grasp of that it's much easier so once I switch out these colors um, I'm, I'm gonna show it here today so you came at the right time <laughs> so we're just building up um, the yellow here on this infinity mech warrior that's what I'm calling it I don't remember I don't remember the exact term of it what paint are you using I mean once you get the thinner the the consistency down any paint will work in an airbrush uh, craft paints that you get at um, the cheap craft paints that you would get at um, Walmart or uh, hobby stores or craft stores I I would recommend not using those because the pigment in them is so thick the the pigment in it it's very chunky 
in that sense. The acrylics seem to be better. They're finely ground. Uh, ink, like artist inks, work really well through it. Vallejo has a very good um, brand of paint. You know, their model airs work really well. You know, you can shoot Reaper paints, Citadel paints. Depending on the paint is also uh, how much you need to thin it. I find uh, Citadel paints is a little thicker, so you have to thin that a little bit more. I like uh, Pro Curl paints from Monument. They're perfect for airbrush. They flow through it so easy. Dang it. Keep getting those speckles. Hopefully my uh, compressor isn't too loud. So I'm gonna try to stop, you know, not speak when that's going. Cause I have it basically right underneath where my camera and microphone are. I'll have to reposition it. Vallejo, yep, Vallejo works really well too. Alright, so I think I'm pretty happy with where my placement of the yellow is. I'm going to move this paper towel so you can see it. The white behind it's throwing it out. Go ahead and set him aside to, to dry. I'm going between two different uh, models today with the airbrush. I'm also working on, I'll be painting the skin and stuff on this hill giant from Reaper. So you're just having issues thinning it. Do you use the model air or just regular Vallejo? Either one works really well through the airbrush too, so. I'll we'll zoom out of here so I can show you how I clean this. So I'm just using a little dropper bottle, water bottle. Kind of flush out the the paint out of the cup here. There we go. This is um Badger spray through airbrush cleaner, but you can. I just you can use uh, any cleaner, airbrush cleaner. And I'm just spraying it through to get all the color out. Water works as well. Just straight up water. Oh, sure. Yeah, that's why that's why I'm showing. <laughs> so I'm just doing a quick little clean and then I'll show you how I thin it. Hold on. 
one second here. There we go. What do you have your airbrush set, set at? Because you don't, uh, with airbrushing, these small areas and just small stuff, usually as low as 10 or 15 PSI. I keep it about 20 to 25. I know some other artists, uh, Aaron and Lovejoy, I believe, has it at like 50 or 40 or 50 or something. He has it like extremely high. But at between 20 and 30, depending on what you're doing, uh, for fine detail work, I still use the same. I don't change my air pressure. I just have a, um, a smaller needle. This is a Badger Patriot 105 Arrow. It's a small. It has a smaller cup, and I just have a .3 needle in it. That's for all my like detail, you know, layering up and stuff for priming. And base coats, I use my um, Badger Patriot 105. Has a bigger cup. That's really the only difference. It's just it has a bigger cup, and the needle that comes with this is a 0.5. So it's just a the standard needle that comes with it. Can't see the needle there. <laughs> But I use that for all my um, priming and uh, ba main base coats. You can still use your base, use primer and base coat with this. I just you need to thin it down because of the smaller needle. All right, so we're gonna take a break from little Mister Yellow, and we're gonna switch over to the Giant. So I'll show how I paint him up. Be painting skin on with him. Because there there are cheaper, yeah, you know, small compressors. It really depends on how much airbrushing you're using. I have a small little compact one that I use for when I'm at like the game store or at conventions. And I switch through them. Uh, I have a bigger one on now that I use if I'm going to, and I, if I'm going to use a lot of, do a lot of airbrushing, I just have the bigger tank. All right. So we'll zoom in on this guy. So this is a hill giant from Reaper Miniatures Bones. So I um, put them on a base, some cork tiles, some slate rock stones, a little gravel, and everything. He was prime black with uh, Badger's Steinler Res primer, and then. Uh, base coated with mahogany from Pearl Krill. It's a nice reddish brown. And I just concentrated that about like, you know, 45 degree angle around, keeping the black sh shade underneath. So if you look under on the bottom, you can see more black than you would on top. So now I'm going to go to my first flush, the flesh tone, shadow flesh, and we'll apply that on the upper portions of it, leaving the mahogany and the black primer underneath.
It must be uh, garbage time. The garbage truck is driving by. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. So when thinning paint, I just add some uh, flow improver. I just put a little bit at the bottom of the cup, so you can see where that the reservoir right here is where the needle. I'll fill that up with the flow improver and then add my paint in and then I'll stir it up with a brush like this. Um, different paints have different consistencies so you're gonna have to try sorry <laughs> I have my window open and, and it's right next to where the garbage truck goes by. Sorry about that. All right. Uh, different paints have different consistencies, so you're going to have to try to see. There's no, you know, set formula for each paint. You know, two parts uh, flow improver or thinner to paint. It's everything's different. So I usually try. I usually start with like a one to one. To start off with maybe a two to one. Uh, flow improver to paint and why I use flow improver it just helps the paint flow well thin it out without breaking up the the pigment and it flows really well and I don't get any tip dry because that can clog up your paint um, basically it would it will stop the paint flowing out and back here which you don't want So like I said, I usually start with um, like a one-to-one. -one. So I have a pretty big area that I'm covering. So I want to get roughly that bottom reservoir with the flow improver. And then I'll add some shadow flesh into that and then stir it up. When you're first starting out, uh, thinning your paints for your airbrush. Use um, cups and then pour it into the airbrush until you're comfortable with thinning it. I would recommend not to do what I just did starting out. Uh, as you get more comfortable with thinning your paints, you can do it right in the cup. But just get like little uh, paper cups. Um, little uh, medicine plastic cups and just practice thinning the paints getting a couple different brands and seeing the th how you thin them so here I'm just stirring it you know mixing it all together and to check the consistency I like to use a brush you know cheap old brush checking the consistency you pull up the paint on the side of the cup here and if it flows down you know right away it's nice and smooth flowing down then you have a good consistency another tip to figure you know to see if you have right consistency is pulling the paint to the side of the cup hopefully you can see this on the camera and pressing the, br the bristles against the side of the cup if the paint comes through the bristles, yeah, if you can see the bristles coming through, then that's the right consistency. If you see more bristles than paint, it's too thin. And that might be, you know, that might be what you want. Or if it's no bristles, it's too thick. You want a consistency where it's similar to this, where you can still see the bristles through it, but they're covered with the paint. Hopefully that makes sense. And I will do that and then I'll spray it on a my paper towel. Like so. Make sure it's flowing out nice and smooth. I'll wait till the compressor is done making noise. So that's a good way to check it, because uh, if it's too thick, the paint's in it's too thick, 
then it's not going to flow through the airbrush. Um, if you're, you know, that, that works with Vallejo and also different colors in a, a paint brand like a yellow or white, um, even red. White is really, can be very problematic. You need to thin it down more so than some of the other colors. So just take a few colors from your your paint brand or maybe even try a different, you know, you know, grab one from Vallejo, Citadel, Procrail, Reaper, and test them out and see how much you need to do. It's a pra it, you know, it takes time. And once you get that knack, uh, you get the idea of how it thins, you should be fine. Alright, so now we got our uh, Sorry. <laughs> they must know I'm on right now, so they're making all this noise. All right, so now I'm going to concentrate my highlights to the top portions of the muscles. And what's really great with a .3 needle is it's a, a, a more fine detail needle. I can get right in and do spot areas like the muscles. So I just I press down to get the air out and I slowly pull back to get the paint to come out. And just like with any uh, new technique or something you're, you're going to learn, it, it takes practice and time and patience. To get control, you know, just take a piece of, you know, either paper towel or a piece of plastic card. Here, I'll do it on my my desk and just do lines you know like that and, and see what happens when you press back more paint it, you know if you press it in that same area and don't move it you're getting more paint coming out and it's starting to puddle and, and from the air it's puddling out and he's spraying out and everything so it's just it's a hand-eye coordination just practicing with it to figure out how to do it you know just take a bunch of um, models that you can practice on you can get a bunch of um, cheap army men at the store or pick up a bunch of Reaper models for like two, three bucks a piece and just practice with it. Yeah. So we're just hitting all the mus the, the raised portions of the muscles. So I want to keep that mahogany down in the shadows like I was doing with the yellow robot. So I'm just hitting the top portion. You know, moving from the bottom up. So at the end of my, the air coming out, 
one. So I'll have more paint up at the top. The big thing is that you got to keep it moving because if you keep it in one spot, you're going to get that spider web splatter effect. So I'm, I'm shooting it right here, you know, right at it, but then I'm, I'll slowly move it out so it kind of gives it a dusting on the edge and blends out. So the end of my, of moving my airbrush going out here is when I pull out, I'll stop spraying and it'll just spray right past it. So it'll start the color, the club's in the way, it'll start the color here and as I move out it'll, because of the curve going down, it'll just dust the edge and it'll give it that blend. So now that I got that blend right there, I'm coming in and hitting the top part of this muscle because it's a separate area. Same thing right there. So right in here, I'm keeping, I'm hitting this muscle, but the shoulder is bright here but it, it fades out get down the hands that's what's nice with this uh, fine needle is I can do little lines I can paint each finger and not get a whole lot of overspray So concentrating more uh, brighter highlights at the at, at the top. So it just takes practice and patience. building up those highlights. The... <laughs> Once you get an idea of how to thin, get at a proper thinning for your airbrush and then cleaning it, is also another thing, but also the control of the, the trigger. And there's different uh, airbrushes. There's This is the, the dual action where you press down for the air and pull back for the paint. There's also a trigger, like a gun trigger type of um, airbrush. And there's a single action airbrush where you just press it down and it just sprays out the, the paint. Uh, 
he's looking good so far, so we'll just finish up the legs here. Hello, it's the Ninja. I got my compressor making noise at the moment, so hold on a second. <laughs> Hopefully that's not too loud. Um, I'm definitely gonna have to move it to a different spot from the, the camera microphone. Okay, good. We're painting the hill giant here. Showing out some airbrush. So I'm just getting underneath here, under, you know, underneath his butt flap to get some of the skin here. No, he doesn't have a butt. <laughs> they didn't sculpt that on there. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is, um, well this is a Reaper model. Reaper bones. He's about hand size. I thought I'd throw some paint on them as I keep showing them off. So I thought I'd show some uh, airbrushing and doing some skin. Answering questions. Oh, they're they're huge monsters in D and D, but in Pathfinder and previous editions, they're large creatures. Yeah, I haven't played too much, so I'm not sure exactly the difference. I just uh, from tabletop gaming, you know, I go by this size. So he's he would be a a, a larger model, obviously. I. Th I think in some of the other games, they do have, like, they go by base size. Such. So this is a Space Marine. Standard Space Marine. So here's the other one, other model I've been airbrushing. Is that I, Infinity, getting the yellow on here. They're only 10 feet tall. All right. That's pretty big. <laughs> Your average human is is you know less than six, about five and a half to six feet, depending. So yeah, ten feet that would be pretty big. I mean, these are obviously two different scales, uh, two different games. Um, the hit the hit in the fluff of um, for Space Marines they. They stand at 10 feet tall, which is weird. 8 to 10 feet tall. And this hill giant is obviously, oh, about twice the size, so he would be about 20, maybe. But yeah, 10 feet, 15 feet, that's about, about right. All right, so I like I'm liking where he's at, and that's just with uh, a base, you know, first highlight of shadow flesh. Now we're going to go to our tan flesh, which is more standard flesh tone, where the shadow flesh is, you know, darker. Yeah. Yeah, it makes more sense that the more powerful giants would be taller. Yeah. I agree. 
So it does it instead of it going, you know, slightly bigger, it's like huge huge difference. Zoom out here, show off how I clean these. So just shooting, you know, water, rinsing out the cup here. So this is another cup that you don't want to drink from, Ninja. This is my uh, airbrush sp spit bucket. <laughs> Brush for hire. He's coming. <laughs> yeah. Hello. It's a raid. Hey, guys. He's coming with some, t some 20 people. My goodness. Let's wait for it to catch up. Hello, everyone. My name's Casey. Welcome, welcome. Hello, hello. Choo choo, great, great train. It was a quiet day. I was gonna stop by and say hi. I got sidetracked. How was your stream? Hopefully everything went well. <laughs> Come on, our raid. Good to hear. Yeah, I should have stopped by. Hello, welcome everyone. Smooth Blend Studio, thank you for that follow. Welcome, welcome. Doing some uh, airbrushing, painting up a hill troll. And also. <laughs> Crazy Ferret Wife, Maine. Love it. Thank you, welcome. Working on also this yellow uh, infinity. guy Dr. Tentacle love it thank you guys and gals thank you for the follows welcome hope everyone's doing well on this Friday All right, so let's do some more skin tone. Uh, it depends on the project. Usually I'll do um, airbrushing. Uh, I kind of go in back and forth. Usually I'll get like base coats done with an airbrush and then I'll start doing some normal brush work on the more finer detail things. That's my compressor. Hopefully it's not too loud for you folks. I'm not gonna try to talk over it, so hold on a second. Um, for like this guy, the majority of him is a skin. And I, I use the airbrush mainly to speed things up. I'm getting more comfortable. I've only been airbrushing for, I think, the last, for the last year. And um, I'm really enjoying the more and more I, I play with it and getting some really good uh, blends and base coats, especially with armor and problematic colors like this yellow. 
which I've painted in the past by brush and it just it takes forever. But I find using an airbrush works really well and then going back in, doing touch-ups with a regular brush. It's definitely a great addition to my toolbox. So, I like it. And I'm at the point now where I feel comfortable explaining it and showing it to people and answering questions. All right, so now we're just adding some uh, tan flush from Procro. The airbrush I'm using is a Badger. Let's put the cap on so it doesn't spill. Uh, Badger 105 Arrow with a 0.3 needle. It's got a smaller cup compared to a Badger Patriot. This has a 0.5 in it, bigger cup. I use this for all my priming and base coats, and then I just switch over to this for details. You can put a, um, a 0.3 in this. So, yeah, yeah, that's what I started out with. I had a, I just, it's like, let's try it. I bought, um, I think it was a Masters airbrush, plus a, it was a, the, the airbrush, the uh, very small, you know, a small, tiny little tank air hoses and everything I got it on Amazon for about 50 bots and um, just started painting with it and trying it out it's like okay this ain't that bad and then um, I won a badger airbrush at a painting contest at a local convention uh, a couple years ago from badger Ken from badger was at the convention and I won a painting contest It's like oh here here you go, price support, and I haven't looked bad since. <laughs> I enjoy the the Badger brushes and and everything. So very cool. Yeah, um, it can be intimidating. You don't want to ruin that new one, that 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 more expensive. Uh, I find the Badger, especially the Patriot, even if I didn't win it. I still would have bought that one because it's well known and I think you can get it for like eighty dollars so that's not too bad uh, I am a, I am sponsored by Badger and I do have a discount so if you go to Badger uh, use the discount code Holt mini paint to get 10% off yeah the harder and Steinbeck ones I heard are really good too. Uh, my buddy, he's got one, and he says he's really nice. <laughs> yeah, make sure um, if to let me know if that works or not. And if not, then I'll give Ken a call and and say, hey, why is this not working? But it should work. It's Hope Mini Paint, so just put that in the the discount. Should be ten percent off. All right, so we'll zoom back in. <laughs> Pink Luna Inferno, Inferno, thank you for the follow. Welcome. Love the name. All right, so let's add some more skin tone. He looks rather uh, sunburnt here. I mean, he is a hill giant, but we don't want him to be too burnt. So just slowly pressing down and pulling back on the trigger. To get those highlights. So I want to keep it more towards the top of the muscles and keeping the dark down below. So figuring out the best way with um, highlights and shadows. <laughs> Got a raid and run. Well, thank you for the raid. Rush for hire, I enjoy it. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. You have a good one. We'll talk to you soon. 
uh, when figuring out highlights and shadows, the best way that I find is holding your model up towards your light and maybe just slightly turning it because you can see where the, the highlights, the, the brightest parts of the lamp hitting. And then you can see where the shadows will lie. I mean, you can see it right here on the rock just with that base color. So you can see where the black is in between the rocks and underneath the, the stones. Thank you, Sean. Have a good one if you're still in here. So that's the best way to figure out where your highlights and shadows are. If you want more of a directional, not just from top down, but more from a side, you can just rotate your model and see where the light shines excuse me from your your lamps so we're just what so great about with the um, the detail I can get right in there and get really fine lines with it oh. there we go uh, no, I didn't. I'm actually doing a kind of a Zenithal Prime sense with the paint. All right, Ninja. Thanks for stopping in. Hope to see you next week. Have a good weekend. Um, you can do Zenithal Priming. And that's basically... Here, I'll show it to you. It doesn't have to be a, a black, gray, to white priming. So here's just a regular uh, Space Marine Intercessor. And there's my zenithal. Zenithal is from the, the top most coming down. So it's not really a, a priming. It's I'm figuring out where my highlights can be. So I just did it from a top down. Hold it to the side. You can see it's much darker underneath from the overhang from his gun. So if I want it a little bit more to the side, I'm using my airbrush as the sun. So let's say I want it coming more at like a 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock. The size I'm using is a 0.3. I think it's uh, their super detail. So let's say I want more direction with the sun here. So I'm just spraying it at this point. Okay, so that's now giving me a light source coming from here. By all means, uh, feel free to ask any questions or comment. If I'm in the middle of something, I'll get to your question as soon as possible, but don't feel that you can't ask anything that you'll interrupt me. The whole point of my streams is to help other hobbyists learn things and answer questions, so that's fine. I enjoy chatterboxes. I'll, I'll start to ramble on it, things too. So feel free to ask questions of what I'm doing or how to do something. So don't feel like, oh, God, he's in the middle of something. I can't talk to him. Feel free to, to ask questions right away. So now I have a good idea of where I want my lights. And if I want it to look a bit brighter, like let's say on his, on his head, I'll just come in here. And I kind of did an overspray too much to to show that <laughs> it's really bright. So we'll do here, same thing. There we go. <laughs> that works better. But yes, you can do a zenithal priming where uh, start with the black or a dark color do a lighter one you know at a 45 degree angle and then a bright at the very top zenithal which is the, at the very top so you can do that as you're priming and then when you apply your paints it'll be much brighter because of the undercoat at the top so if I were to paint you know if I were to paint just like this he's going to be all 
you know, even though I put on brighter colors, it's still going to be kind of a dark. But if I have some white or a, a lighter color, like with this, with him, these areas, even though it's the same color as down here, it's still going to be a little bit brighter because of that undercoat. The big debate of priming with black to white is, I'll kind of go on a, not too much of a tangent here, but if you're painting with a primer, a black primer undercoat, you're, that's mainly for darker colors and metallics. Uh, if you're painting brighter colors, like this yellow, you kind of want more of a, um, a lighter undercoat, like gray or white in that sense. Uh, if you happen to watch the VOD of this later, you'll see me how I painted this. I started with the black primer, and then did a, a reddish brown uh, coat, and then I built up the yellow using um, yellow ochre. I'm sorry, not yellow ochre. A brown, like a yellowish brown. Then a yellow ochre, and then a then a bright yellow. This is a uh, commission piece that I'm doing, and his army is very vibrant, bright yellow armor. So. Okay. So let's go ahead and continue adding this tan flash on there. So now it, this is more towards light, you know, very similar to the Xenophil priming concept where I'm building up my highlights with lighter colors on the raised areas. And with the number three needle I can get really close and doing more spot highlights. So same thing, same idea that I could do with a regular brush too. Spraying across the knuckles, here across the, the toes and the top of the foot. So just building up that brighter pinkish Caucasian skin. It might look too bright, but I'm going to come back with uh, the transparent paints and do a filter, which a glaze almost. And bring back that color. So I'm I'm using each muscle. Yes, it is a Reaper miniature. Uh, Hill Giant, I think it's the name of it. It's a Reaper Bones, and I just put it on a base with some rocks and such. The The base is a cork tile with some uh, slate rock, and then some little stones and sand and gravel. Yeah. He was sitting on my uh, side of my table, prime, so I thought I'd paint him up show off some uh, airbrushing. All right, so now I'm uh, just kind of looking around to see if there's any other spots. Okay, now we're going to add some uh, transparency like glaze filters 
to tone it down. Actually, I want to make it a little bit brighter. So we're going to add some um, olive flesh, which is a, a very pale flesh tone. I have a little bit left of tan flesh in here, so I'm just going to add it to here. I don't want to go to this brightness, but I just I still want it bright. Add some flow improver. Just using a cheap old brush to stir it. So I'm just spraying through to make sure I get my new color coming through. So concentrate more towards that zenithal almost. You know, roll bright. And in, in some cases, it's going to be too bright, but adding the uh, lasers will knock it down. So you almost want to make it really bright so that color shines through. These big models are great for playing around with the airbrush and getting some great results. Picking out my colors, hold on a second. And do a quick little clean. Chat the chat, see if there's any questions. Right through and get these clean out the color colors. nice and clean. Alright. 
Um, no, I don't think I'll use red. Alright, so we're going to start with some uh, the Pro Trill Transparent Brown. It's a nice reddish brown to kind of bring back the uh, brown tone, earthy tone of the skin. Because right now he's he's looking good, but he's a bit too bright. So I want to, and you know, he would have that bit of a, a tan being out in the sun all the time. So we want to bring back that tone. So we're going to add this transparent brown, thin it down. Yeah, he's so nice and smooth. <laughs> He's that clean, that clean shaven hill giant. <laughs> and then for some uh, color into it, we'll add some purple. <laughs> it's so nice and smooth. <laughs> so this we're going to add a um, pretty good amount of flow improver, about twice amount. Well, he does have some arm hair. There's like some forearm hair right here above the uh, the armband. So I'll, I'll be painting that in, match his hair on top. He's got some on this side too. They just didn't sculpt any other hair on it. It would have been really cool if he had like back hair. That would be really creepy though. <laughs> and he's got a little uh, firm uh, fur tunic but yeah uh, back hair would be really cool that's an idea <laughs> alright so we're adding some transparent brown might need to add some more flow improver just to thin it out nice and smooth but we'll see so when you're mixing up your colors, I showed this earlier, but I'll show it again. Um, using a stir brush, holding the brush up against the side of the pot, and if you can see the paint coming through, you see the bristles coming through the paint, then that's a nice thin paint. If it's having a hard time for the paint to come through the bristles as you press against the side of the cup, you need to thin it more add more of your thinner or flow improver. So now with the um, transparents, I just want a nice thin glaze or filter. So you can see just slow, you know, same amount of pressure as what I was doing with the paint layers. It's still showing through that skin on my glove here you can still see that through the filter. So it's just kind of darkening it compared to up here and then down here on this color. I mean, it's that dark of a color, but thinning it and just gently pulling back on the trigger to get like a nice mist, it just, it filters. Yes! wait for my compressor to stop making noise. Yes, this is the uh, transparent brown. And then I'm going to be adding some uh, purple into it. Yeah, and, and it's um, the mixture is you know, to start off with, usually when I thin paint I'll do like two to one with the flow improver. For me, I find the Vallejo Flow Improver works really well with them. Uh, I know Jason said that they're working on producing their own Flow Improver, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, usually I start with normal paints. It's like a two to one mixture. Uh, with this, it's like four to one. And I just test it to see how it works, either on my hand or on the paper towel. But I love using the transparents through the airbrush and just filtering. And we'll see why. <laughs> <laughs>
So here, because I'm, I want to emphasize the shadows, I'm shooting from underneath. And concentrating more on the bottom of the muscles. So you can see the difference right there. Just slowly building that up. And if it's too heavy after spraying through it and I totally lose my highlights, I can just go back to the highlights. It's a lot of back and forth. so I can zoom in a bit more. So I'm just spraying and concentrating right down into the recesses of it. That's where I'm pointing it at. He does have some chest hair. <laughs> So my movement of my airbrush, of the brush, I'm moving toward the shadow. So I'm getting that kind of fade from here and then more right into the shadow. <laughs> I'm sure there is. He's all natural. Maybe they have a giant that's like that. So just adding that bit of um, this reddish brown into the shadows really helps tie the color together on the skin. And then when I add that purple into it and adding some more purple in there, that'll help contrast nice with the reddish tones. Yeah, see how, you know, how bright this is down here compared to up here. So just adding that little bit of filter with the color for your shading just it gives it more of a natural look that I really like. Well, good for you that you completed a model today. Yeah, your first step on the way. Yeah, adding purples and blues into your skin tone. I mean, if you look at your skin, I'm kind of pale here, but I mean, you can see there's like hints of purple and blue in there. You can add even blue into it, like into the shadows, because that's your, your, you know, the blood flowing underneath your skin. So adding that, you know, just looking at your skin, seeing how it's more kind of a paler, redder on the bottom of my palm compared to the top where it gets more light. And even adding red in there too. Um, let me grab a one that's 
show you more of the end result. This is uh, Lord of Blights from Warhammer Age of Sigmar. So he's he's got like rotted skin and, and pus and everything coming out. He's really nasty looking. But adding the more red and purple, it, it gives it that bruising. But even on like this portion of his arm, I still have it in the shadows just to give it some color. Because otherwise, it, it, you know, looking at the giant from the back, it looks good. It looks, you know, it, it's reasonable. But then adding in the brown and then in the purple, once I add the purple into it, it just adds more color back into the skin. Skin tones are all different shades. And you can have a, a whole lot of fun with, with them. adding this brown in here. Oh, too much. That's alright, it's in the back. Whoa! Glad it's a Bonesman miniature and doesn't break. <laughs> it's very flips. So I'm just concentrating more in the recesses and then underneath. Uh, models like this, it's got a lot of muscle, you know, flabs and everything. You can really, I can add more like some bruising and stuff because it's just heavy weight and just the muscles hanging on each other, the flabs. Some areas I'm kind of getting too much in there, but it's fine because I can touch that up. I can go back in with a um, a brush and kind of help smooth that out if need be. The airbrush isn't going to be my be-all, end-all for it, but I'm definitely getting a lot of quick results with the airbrush so it's just a nice addition to have to your um, your painting toolbox So just working around the model, getting all that, that color in there. Uh, over too much spray on that. Sorry, I'm off the camera. Ah. building up on my needle here. All 
All right. So there's with the brown. So adding, we're going to thin some purple transparent into the same. We'll mix it with the brown so it's not so vibrantly purple. <laughs> A violet purple. Because the purple is very pigment rich. rich, So it's really, really strong. So toning it down a bit with the brown. will give us some really good results. So just a little bit in there. A little bit goes a long way. Thin that a little bit more. I'm going to spray it out here on my paper towel until I get that new color coming through. You can see how it's starting to get darker. <laughs> I knew my stuff. Uh, I've been painting for about 30 years. I started into the miniature hobby back in early 1991, 92. Around that time is when I first started painting. Got yeah, got bitten by the hobby bug. Um, and I just been doing that for that long, you know, for that long. <laughs> Uh, I didn't really have anything to, you know, I, I, there was no internet, you know, things like that, no real game stores nearby that had painters that I could talk to. So I just learned from um, uh, White Dwarf magazine and things like that. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's all that, that good, good living. <laughs> No, I don't look that old, but I am that old. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I, it was a trial and error. A lot of, you know, just trying to figure out how to get the same results that I saw on the models. Um, and the last, and I, I started doing commissions about, I do, I do full time, I full time commission painter. And I been doing videos um, Twitch streaming, things like that in the last five years. So I hope, hopefully I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but a lot of it is trial and error and talking to people and thank God for uh, internet and, and these wonderful community, other people in the, in the hobby community. I've never really, I've never met someone that isn't happy to talk about the hobby and help you out. I just started to stream regularly um, this week, so uh, a few months ago I stopped streaming, but now I'm I'm back to streaming. I stream Monday through Friday, uh, starting about two o'clock, two p.m. two o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time, to four or whatever. Yes, the community is so great. I've, uh, I rarely met anyone that isn't willing to help other people, and you know, taught their ear off about stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely. 
So like I said, if you have a question or anything, pop it in into the chat and I will get to it as soon as possible. Uh, even if it stops me paint, you know, what I'm painting to explain it. Or if I, if you need, want to know a certain technique, I will stop what I'm doing and show you an answer as quickly as possible. So, I mean, these things that I'm working on, I, you know, I'm just painting, I'm just sitting here painting, so I might as well put on, on the stream and, and see if anyone wants to come and hang out. I'll do, uh, occasionally I will do commissions on stream, but I can stop doing that and answer questions. It's not a big deal. Besides uh, Twitch, I also have um, videos on my YouTube channel. Just search KC Holt, initials KC and Holt, H-O-L-T. And I have videos on that. Uh, with the Twitch streams, uh, certain ones I will probably just pop over there onto my YouTube channel. Uh, I do have a Patreon page that I'm, I'm making videos, and that's under uh, Holt Miniature Paint. Holt Miniature Painting. I'm working on trying to figure out how to do uh, virtual one-on-one -on -one painting classes. So if you're interested in that, uh, definitely you can email me or message me. My email is Casey Holt miniature painting. I'm sorry now. A uh, Holt mini paint at gmail.com. All the information is down below. Definitely. And you can see more of my work on my Facebook page, uh, Holt Miniature Painting. All the links are down below <laughs> to all the social stuff. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that fun stuff. But yes, I am I, I stream. I am now streaming uh, Monday through Friday, 2 to whenever. You know, usually to about 3. Uh, stream is usually about 2 to 3 hours, maybe 4, depending on how things go. Or I get to the point where I'm very hungry and I need to go eat. <laughs> so, I haven't got that there yet. So, but yes, thank you for for stopping by, checking things out. All right, so now we got our purple brown mitts in there. See, it's kind of a burgundy color. Yeah, food always wins. I haven't got there yet, so I'm probably good for a good another half hour, an hour, so. So now we're just going to punch this color into uh, the deepest recesses and underneath. And if it kind of sprays up a bit on it, on the skin, that's not, not a big deal. But it just adds some more realism to our model. that up on because they sculpted nipples on them. So just getting underneath the cheek here and underneath the mouth. Try to get in there in the eyes. Eye socket underneath the nose. And this just helps punch up the color. So using a uh, like a purple, like a dark purple or even blue into your uh, shadow color instead of using a brown or a black, it makes it look more realistic in the sense that it gives it more color. 
Uh, if I were just to put in a dark brown, it it wouldn't it wouldn't be real. It, it wouldn't look real. Uh, it would look bland. Uh, putting black in because black will just suck out the color. And it just it wouldn't look right. So adding um, a darker color like a purple um, or a brown uh, or blue. And here I mixed it with the brown, so I still have that warm tone with a bit of cool tone, which is purple is on the spectrum. It's it's a little cooler. That gives me a nice contrast. So even if I'm painting, um, let's say a black area like black cloth, I'll highlight it up with um, blues and purples added into the black for the highlights. Same with white. You don't want to highlight up with a white because it's on the opposite. It, it washes out the color. But using, um, you know, like a blue, like pale blue grays and stuff to brighten that up. Here I used a bright pale flesh tone. It was this olive flesh, which is an off-white tone. It gives me a, a nice, it will look more natural, is what I'm getting at, than using just straight purple or black, uh, straight white or black. If you add too much white into your mitts, it looks very pastel. If you put too much black into your mitts for your shadows, it looks all muddy and it just, it, you can't see it. It's just, well, it's bland. <laughs> Hello there. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm painting a hill giant. And I'm showing some, I'm talking about airbrushing. I'm just adding in the darker shadows with some, uh, some purple, brown, burgundy type color. That color right there. Well, hold on a second. That's my compressor. It makes the the chat saying that it's not too loud, but it is loud here, and I don't want to yell over it. So I just have to wait for that to end. Um, starting with an airbrush, it depends on what you want to do with it. If you want to just do um, priming and base coats, you know you don't need to spend too much to get into airbrushing. So it really depends on, on what you want to do. You can start with a small, um, reasonable kit in that sense where it's an airbrush, a compressor, hoses, and all that. And as you get more comfortable and what you want to add to it, you can um, start adding different types of airbrushes. I started out with a uh, master brush and uh, compressor kit with the hose and everything I think I got it on Amazon for about fifty dollars and then I started moving for you know moving up uh, I was lucky enough to win a Badger Patriot in a competition at a convention a couple years ago and this is a great brush to start with even if I didn't buy that master brush that the, the brand the name of the band the brand was called masters um, the Badger Patriot is a great brush to start with. It's great for priming, uh, base coats. I use this, this is mainly for that purpose. You have a big enough cup in it. Uh, it comes with a standard 0.5, which gives it a good spray. Um, what's great about with the Badger brushes is there, you can easily get replacement parts.
Yeah, um, I got it off of Amazon. So, uh, that master's brush. But um, you should be able to find uh, a Badger brush. I believe Badger does send to Europe. Um, I'm sponsored by them, and I have a discount. So, it's Master's Airbrush is the name of it. So if you look on Amazon, you can find that. Uh, you can also get Badger brushes, but if you go to Badger website itself, um, you can use my code Holt Mini Paint and get 10% off if you want to try that. Yeah, Master's Airbrush. And that's a good brush to start out with. It's very similar to the Badger brush. And um, the kit I got, it came with a small little compressor the air hose and everything so it's a good starting brush I like it too I I and the airbrush and the badger brushes I like those too all the airbrushes even the you know a wide variety of them on badger I'm not sure I don't think it's PayPal but if you have a debit card with your bank, or even your bank account, you might you should be able to do that. Yeah. Because I know Amazon doesn't take PayPal, but if you can set it up with um, debit card from your bank. I don't know offhand, so, you know, I would check into that to see what payments are. Yeah, sure. Check it out later. And once you get it and start working with it, let me know. <laughs> I have uh, videos on my YouTube channel um, showing airbrushing and also um, a lot of the previous Twitch streams that I had, I have on my YouTube channel. It's uh, just search KC Holt, the initials K and C, and then Holt, H-O-L-T. Uh, the link is down below, but you can just switch, go over to um, my page there. I think, hold on a second. <laughs> Here, let me, I'll click in, I'll add the, um, a recent video so people can just click on the link. Hold on one second. Here, I'll, I'll link to the more recent video I have. That is uh, the more recent video, but that just gives you a link. You can also click on the all the other stuff. Um, the needles, it depends. For priming and uh, base coating, to get a, a, a wider spray is a 0.5, and that's usually the standard needle that you're going to get. With this brush that I'm doing now, I have a point three. It's more of a detail brush, a detail needle. It's a th it's a smaller needle, and that's how I'm able to get those very thin lines. Yeah. With it. So the the two brushes that I use, that's the ones I show here, is uh, they're both Badger Patriots. This is uh, Badger Patriot one hundred five. 
the normal one. And this has a 0.5 needle, has a bigger cup size. And then I have the Badger Patriot 105 Arrow. It's just, it just has a smaller cup size. And I just put in um, the 0.3 needle. There's the Badger Sotar 2020, and that's more finer detail. I think it's a 0.25 or something like that. Um, I only use these two, and it's whatever, whatever you're going to use it for. I started with the airbrush at a 0.5 just for getting base coats and priming. And then as I got more comfortable with, with it, I started, I wanted a, a more finer detail to get in real close. So this is a, uh, this, I was working on this one earlier in this um, stream. So you can check back on that, how I did, how I painted this up. But um, I was able, I did it all with this, just hitting those smaller areas, building up those highlights. So the standard needle, I think, is a 0.5 that you're going to need. You can start off with a 0.3, that detail. Um, you're just going to need to thin your your primer and your, your base coats a little bit more because it's a smaller uh, diameter. Go ahead and finish this color all around. And then we'll switch to a brush. And don't think that the airbrush is going to be your be all end all to work and think that it's a magical. Uh, tool that once you have the airbrush all your miniatures are going to look great um, it's just it helps it just adds it's just another tool in your toolbox just like with any other technique it takes a while to learn it to learn um, to thin it to clean it to control it it definitely is faster I find it's faster for uh, base coats um, I'm now getting to the point where I'm getting nice. I'm doing, you know, a lot of the majority of this model is skin, and I'm doing that all with uh, an airbrush. And then I can just come in and do touch-ups with the brush. But some of the other areas I would just do with the brush. It doesn't replace a brush that I found. I did a very large one sits scale figurine. Um, if you look on my Facebook page, you'll you'll see it. And the majority of that was with, done with an airbrush, just because it's a bigger model. Um, the smaller ones, what I would do with like regular Space Marines is I would do the bulk of you know because they're mainly just one color, and then. The, all the other little bits like their guns and holsters are different colors but I would do the majority of the models with the airbrush you know prime it one color and then hit all the highlights with the lighter colors same as I'm doing with him basically the same I did with this I'll get that done with the airbrush and then come back with a regular brush and then do all the little detail stuff Yeah, it definitely is fun with the airbrush because you just go shh, shh, shh. And I find using um, an airbrush for priming 
and even base coating instead of using a, uh, a rattle can or spray can, I get one, I get more control of where I want those color, where I want the colors, and I feel like I'm not wasting a whole lot of paint. With an airbrush, uh, with a um, a primer can, you know, I'm, I'm shooting with the rattle can, and it's spraying way more than I want, and I just want it right in here, and it's all right. So let's say I just want it on top of him. Yeah, we'll back this out. So I just want to get coated here, but I find with a spray can, I'm getting like this far out. So like I'm getting paint over here, I'm getting paint over there. But with an airbrush, I can control it closer in. Yeah. I mean, it's once you figure it out and start doing it you're like oh wow this is this is awesome so you do get that wow factor and it's like wow this, this is great and then you i i'm now at the point where i'm finding like okay what else can i use it with the airbrush i did um a beholder that's on my youtube it was a twitch stream and i painted that up i am yes i am from the u.s I'm in Minnesota. Minnesota. UK. <laughs> no, I haven't. I grew up, I was born and raised in Arizona, and now I live in Minnesota. So I've I've only been in the U.S. I've never gone out of the U.S. I've been in different. I lived in different states in the U.S., but I've never gone out of North America. Oh, I'm sure there is. <laughs> back in here. Why would you still live there if there's still tots in the air? <laughs> well, I guess, you know, in some cases it's, it's hard to leave an area, you know, can't afford it or whatnot. Or... All right. So I'm really liking how he's looking. Let's put on some other colors. Let's clean out the airbrush here. And we'll start. Oh, zoom back out. I'm really digging where he's at. So we'll start. Uh, I'll clean out my airbrush and we'll start adding some, painting some of the other areas working out the base coats on that and we'll do that with the brush do a quick little clean area here
Uh, all right. Shut off my compressor there, so we don't have that making a bunch of noise. So I'll just do a quick little clean for now, and then I'll do a thorough cleaning later. in here. So I'm just doing a quick little making sure there's no liquid in here. Alright, and we'll set that aside. it out here. All right. So looking at the model here, he's got kind of a the wolf uh, hide skirt thing there. Butt flap is what I call it. <laughs> and he's got some other fur uh, around the armbands. So I want to have it more of a gray, bluish gray to offset the warmth of the skin tone. So see here so we're gonna go with um, a base coat of dark gray blue and then build up the highlights with the gray blue and then some final highlights of bold titanium white all the paints I'm using are uh, pro krills from monument hobbies and creature caster Some of my favorite paints that I like to use. So we're just applying that onto our palette. So I'm keeping this more towards the cool side of the spectrum. So it's it's that bluish tone. So even with the uh, the brown mahogany base coat, I'm going to use that to my advantage here and kind of keep that up in the shadows just to make it look like it's dirty. It has some texture on here, so I'm just, I'm, I want to keep that dark brown in the recesses of it, and I can emphasize that more with some darker colors and the sh and shading. So I'm just dabbing this on here to just kind of, it's not quite a dry brush. 
sense where you, you take your brush and you wipe off all the paint and then you flick it across the area. Uh, it's more wet paint, so I guess more of a wet brushing. But I'm just dabbing it on in here because I want to keep that dark brown in the recesses. So he's got the little wolf head right here. I will be showing similar uh, dry brushing technique in just a minute with the lighter colors. So I'm not, what I'm getting at is I'm not giving it a full solid base coat because I want to keep some of that uh, brown in the recesses there. Actually, I'm no longer airbrushing, so I can take out this glove. <laughs> That's better. concentrate this more on his uh, little flap loincloth thing here. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. That's the uh, it's the copyright makers <laughs> Reaper Miniatures copyrighted date right underneath there, right in there. <laughs> I just thought that's funny. <laughs> the placement of that. and stuff underneath it. It's throwing up my camera there. There we go. Then I take some of that pale gray blue. Wipe off the majority of it. This is going to be the dry brushing type sense. There's still some paint on there. So here I'm just kind of flicking it across the texture of the fur. So you don't want to do this with uh, your good brushes. But as you can see, it, it, it just totally ruins it. So I'm just doing a quick little dry brush over it to show the texture and then I'm going to refine it with some layering in just a minute. You want to make sure that you're doing it over dry paint because it's still wet there. So I gotta wait for that to dry. Because otherwise the the fur will the, the color will blend and it just will look icky. It just will look all muddied and muddled. And 
and that's not the direction we're looking for so avoiding that spot while I'm painting this other area So while waiting for that to dry on the back part, I'll go ahead and paint in the fur trim on this ankle. Looks like he's got some fur trim on both ankles. Uh, that's it. Because he's got like leather bands on his wrists. This one's tied on with a rope. And this is just with, he's got two bits of cloth there, so. Working around the area, making sure I don't get any on the skin. Just take my time. Rotating around so I can get right in here. It's dry. So I'll just make sure my dry, my brush is completely dry. There's no moisture whatsoever before you dry brush, or you can just use a different brush. I'm just lightly brushing it across the raised areas and there's some paint left in the brush that's catching on there. You don't want to sit there and like dig it on there or anything like that. Just, just gently, lightly brush across it. can slowly build up your highlights by using the same color just brushing over in the same area or the raised portions just to help build up that color those highlights
Now I'm going to go down on, oh, that's still wet. Just gently blow on it to help it dry. So here, because I have small little areas, um, I could dry brush, but I take the chance of getting it onto the skin. So I'm just making sure I have a nice point on my brush. Some thread on there. And then just doing little lines to catch the fur. I can also do, use the side of my brush and just gently bring it across the area. So it's still that kind of a dragging the brush across dry brush technique, but I'm going very slow for it with it. Thank you. Yeah, I like it. I like that adding that blue gray to it really just made the rest of the skin pop. It gives it a nice contrast. Um, the leather on here, I'm not sure what I want to do. The same with the hair. I'm not sure what I want to do on that. Um, I do want the club to be kind of like a yellowish brown. I'm not sure if I want to do the straps at a reddish brown because that's too close to the skin tone. So I'll have to muddle on that. I'm going to finish up the, uh, the fur here for today. We'll stop at that point. more highlights to this. We'll just add the white to it. Doing very similar, where's the app? To another Reaper model I, I did. This uh, Yeti Shaman. Camera does not want to focus on him. There we go. But he's more in a, like a neutral gray to white like a warm fur tone with the fur so I'm going to build up the whites on here it's got that blue gray so it's a cooler tone compared you know contrast to the skin and then I'll come in and I'll just add like washes to dirty it up I'll probably do that on Monday we'll continue working on him on Monday I stream Monday through Friday, starting at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. So now it's uh, 4.41 my time, so almost three hours prior to that. So whatever time you're at, <laughs> it's two hours and 40 minutes from there, earlier. Uh, and I run for roughly two, between two and three hours. If you haven't already and enjoy me rambling and painting, please consider f uh, clicking on that follow button and even, and or even the subscription button. And you can see when I am streaming that. Uh, besides my schedule, I might do random streaming, like on off days and off hours. So, so to keep up to date, please consider following or subscribing. You see what I'm up to. Hello there, Mini Maddies, is that right? Yeah, Mini Maddies, how you doing? I am working on a hill giant from Reaper Miniatures. So we are doing some uh, airbrush work on the skin. Now we're adding some color to the fur trim on here. Good to hear, good to hear. Thank you. 
And that's not, I mean, I'm not completely done with the skin. I will be going back and adding some um, some brighter highlights and smoothing out. It's, it doesn't look in focus. There we go. <laughs> My camera is having a hard time focusing in on, on them today. There we go. So I'm going to come back with the actual brush when I do the details and I'll do some more work on them. But yeah, the airbrush is a great tool to get quick uh, highlights and shadows done. I've been uh, streaming for almost three hours today and working on him. Uh, minus all the chat and the other stuff, I think I spent maybe 30 minutes doing the airbrushing. I don't mind chatting, that's why I'm doing this, so, or answering questions. So. Please feel free to ask anything in there, in the chat, uh, or just chat in general. If you're working on projects while you're listening to me ramble, love to hear about it and would like to share. It's Friday. We made it through the week. At least it's Friday night here. I've been painting miniatures for about 30 years. I know, it's crazy. I don't look that old, but it, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you stopped in. <laughs> Say hi. Welcome. 11.45 at night. That's a late night. Oh, the Trogoth. Nice. Sweet. And a Tree Lord, too. Sweet. I got um, I got a Sylvaneth army that uh, I got in a tray that was painted that I want to repaint. And um, I have some um, the gets, the little goblins and the, the squig that I want to build and paint up. I have a squid over here that I painted. Where did you go? There he is. Oh, here's my little squid. Painting this guy up. I have more that I need to put together and paint him up. It's from the Loon Curse bot set. But uh, I definitely like the, um, the Trogoth models. want to pick some of those up. Paint them up. That'll be fun. Yeah, this guy, he's just, he's been sitting on my my desk, primed, and thought, hey, why not? We'll paint him up, show off some airbrushing techniques on the stream. So, all right, so now we got that blue-gray. We're going to switch to uh, some white. I'm actually going to mix it in with the blue-gray. So it's not so harsh, and that's going to throw off my camera because of the white. So it's a very pale white there. So I'm not doing the dry brushing here because I want to concentrate more towards the edges. So I'll just use my brush here. And then I'll add some washes to kind of dirty it up. Been painting a lot of board games. And just started on the Trogoths. Nice. 
yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, there's definitely a difference. For a while, I was, I was painting non-GW stuff, and then I went back to it, I was like, wow, there is a difference, especially in the building. <laughs> Yeah, I enjoy painting all all types of models. It's probably why I enjoy being a commission painter. So I get a wide variety of models to paint. I started out painting back in the uh, early 90s, late 80s. I th yeah, I think I started painting, yeah, around 1990. Uh, the Ralph Partha and Grenadier metal models for Dungeons and Dragons is what I started with. And then my brother, he, one of my brothers, he introduced me into Games Workshop and Warhammer Fantasy. It was the uh, fourth edition set, and I've been hooked on on painting models ever since. Because when he showed me the game of Warhammer, I was like, "Wow, you can play game! You can play these big old, you can play games with these." I thought you just collected them and painted them. So that was the end of <laughs> of it. I got into tabletop gaming and didn't have a whole lot of people to play games with, so I just enjoyed the painting side of it, the hobby side. And then people started seeing my models and like, hey, that's pretty good. Can you paint some stuff for me? I'll pay you. I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll I'll paint some stuff for you if you pay me. And that's when I started doing commission stuff. And more and more people started asking me. I got uh, game companies. They started uh, started asking me to paint stuff. So I was able to make a living at it which is really fun yeah D, D models yep yeah I do a wide variety of stuff um, armies for Warhammer or any other tabletop games, uh, characters for D&D, role-playing games, uh, board games. I've been commissioned by uh, Fantasy Flight Games on a number of projects for them and their uh, Star Wars Legion Clone War stuff I painted up for their demos at conventions. Uh, Atomic Mass Games for their Marvel Crisis Protocol. I painted up a bunch of models for, for them to show off and demo the games at conventions. When I worked for Games Workshop, I painted up a lot of stuff for the store that I worked at. Another local gaming company, I painted up their models so they can show them off at conventions. So yes, I do do commissions. If you would like a piece commission, just go ahead and send me a message and we can chat. We can 
view my social links down below on Facebook, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter. I also have a website, KC Holt Miniature Painting dot com. Got all that information. <laughs> well, I'm not directing that at you, just in general, who are in there. I also do uh, paint classes and things like that, so. Thank you. So now I'm going to add some uh, dark shadowing to kind of grubby that up because it's too bright. So we're going to use some good old AdRats Earth Shade to grubby it up. And some Athonian camo shade added into there. Let's try to do this without tipping it over. Add some Athonian Camel Shade. It's a nice olive drab green color. I like adding that into the brown. Gives me a nice variety of color and tone in the dirt. So here I just, you know, mix the two together and I'm just going to dab it on here, push it up into the recesses. Just to kind of grubby it up some. Maybe in some patches, some more brown, some more green in the other pat, other areas. So. From all the dirt, sweat, and grime that this guy's going through. So concentrating more towards where it's connected to the belt leather here. And just random randomness. Tones down the blue and the white. So then once that's dry, if I want, I can come back in and touch up some areas. Uh, once I do some more area, uh, more on the model, I might come in and do some more highlights. But he's looking good. So I'm happy with how he's looking so far. Let's pull, push out that palette. So he's on his way. Uh, I'll probably continue working on him on Monday either Monday or Tuesday. So we'll see. And we'll also do some, maybe do some more work on our little Infinity robot here. So I did some uh, airbrush work on him earlier in the stream. 
All right, so it's getting close to five for me here. So I think I'm done for tonight. So let's see who else is that we can raid, see who else is painting. So hold on one second. Uh, thank you all for coming in. First off, for joining in and, and sharing Friday night with me. All the, the new followers, thank you. Greatly appreciate it. All right, let's see here. Well, for all those uh, airbrush fans, we'll go over to uh, Nets Level Painting. Kenny over there is a great uh, airbrusher, and he is more than welcome to answer any questions you would like. So let's go ahead and raid him. So hold on one second. Get that that going. All right. So let's head on over there. Thank you guys and gals. Have a good night, and we'll see you next time. And just about there. And there we go. All right.